Hello everyone and welcome back to the Russian Republic here in Hearts of Iron for Kaiserreich. So, the vote has come in. With 58 to 36 votes, we have a Democratic Republic winning and with 44 to 17, we have Expansionism winning. So let's see, a Democratic Republic. The greatest sin of the nation of Russia was that it never fully managed to democratize itself after the Russian Civil War. We need to further liberalize our nation, our economy, and our people if we are to save ourselves from tyrants, from both left and right. So let's see, this will maintain and politically liberalize... Li li I don't even know how I messed that up, I just know I butchered it. Liberalize the Republic as it is. Remove national spirit, political instability, and Soviet threat, and we'll gain 100 political power. We need both those things, let's look at them. Yeah, that's a problem, and Soviet threat's obviously a problem. So... Let's let's get her done, and we need to go down the political power tree before we go over to expansionism. But we do want expansionism, but uh, we need actually. I think we'll be going reinforcing governmental power. Then we'll get expansionism for the political power as well, and then we should be smooth sailing to do whatever the hell we want. So there's that. Oops. Of course. Three hours text back and text as soon as I'm recording. Why do you people do this to me? Let's see what's going on in the world. We got, uh... I feel like they just got Spanish Africa. I'm not really sure. There we go. A democratic republic. More than a year has passed since Kerensky's death shook the republic, and his successors have managed to preserve democracy in Russia. For the republic! Let's see. The Senate will stay the head of state until the election of a new president in 1937. Remove all foreign minister ideas from the Russian republic. So we get Alexander the I... Konovalov, Konovalov, which grants focus on peace 50%. Okay. We get uh, Vladimir Pierce Smirnov, which is sure to provide the entire country with a lot of alcohol. Um, granting political power gain, consumer goods, okay. The Senate becomes the leader of every single party. Okay. Except for Totalist, apparently. And yeah, the SR Menshevik coalition breaks up. Kerensky's death meant that the fragile SR Cadet coalition was no more. Even though the SR Menshevik coalition has resulted in the two parties gaining considerable influence in the government, ideological differences, excuse me, between the two parties were too great to maintain a coherent coalition, resulting in the Mensheviks leaving the government. This gives way to great possibilities, including a Menshevik Bolshevik coalition in the near, near future. Let the Reds quarrel. The Social Liberals Party will now be called Social No Liberal Naya Party. Social. Okay. Democrat. The Social Democrats will now be called the Social. Um, okay. I'm confused. But. And the Radical Socialists. Now we call the Mensheviks. That's weird. Okay, so the Ninth Duma elections. According to the Constitution, elections are to be held every five years. Although Kerensky's assassination caused major turmoil in Russia, the Eighth Duma has managed to wait out the storm, and elections should proceed without interruption. But who will triumph? See, this would have been a great thing to vote on as well, um, but you know, it's not. That's not going to be able to happen, Bolsheviks. Yeah, we're not going to have the Bolsheviks. Oh yeah, and this is supposed to change. Um, it really doesn't seem to change much. Market liberals go up by 20%. Social Democrats goes up by 20%. But social liberals... Okay, well... I'm going to need to take a look at what all these are, because obviously we're not going to put the syndicalists in. Um, I also want to look at... Okay, they're both shitty. Civilian factories, that's good for what we're doing right now. Um, focus on peace. Desire to be in or expand a faction. Same ideology, monthly, that's good. Political power.
Mm. Well, on the sheer fact that... And didn't the SR Menshevik... Like, what? I thought they broke up. What? PSR will become the ruling party. Social Democrats. And they are also the second. So, yeah. I'd say it is without a doubt what we're going to be choosing as the SR Menshevik Leftist Coalition because we will have the most party popularity. Uh, we're not losing political power. Yeah, that's definitely the way to go. And so what are, what are we right now? We're social liberals. Uh, inclusion of various civil freedoms. So, well, anyway, there we go. So the Senate, oh, but the Duma changed, but we still haven't elected anybody yet. Social Democrats is an ideology whose goal is to reform capitalism and humanize it by aligning it with the ethical ideas of social welfare while maintaining the capitalist made mode of production rather than creating an alternate socialist economic system while usually promoting a plutocratic, it's plutocracy. It's like merchant form of government in a heavily regulated market economy. Some more radical streams exist. See, I don't actually really like this, to be honest, but, you know, it was the best option, so, there you go. Because I feel like the U.S., is, well, oh, excuse me, sorry, drinking water is so noisy. Market liberals see themselves as the mainstream liberal ideology. The main tenets of market liberalism are an unregulated free market and a democratic, plutocratic political system. Market liberals believe that to free the market, to free the people, and they will staunchly defend the political and economic rights of the individual. Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. I think personally, I like the social liberal party the most. So the one we, we were on, but it's kind of whatever. How's Japan doing? You guys go full commie, fascist, something like that? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, we're going to reinforce governmental power. Freedom of thought, speech, and organization are all fine and well, but in a nation dominated by chaos, these matters little. Or these matter little. The government must resume control of the cities, the factories, and the countryside. That doesn't sound good, but, you know. <laughs> Let's uh, get rid of all our freedoms we just uh, made sure everyone had. So it looks like, yeah, Italy beat Austria. Oh, and looks like Poland's about to beat Austria. Interesting. This is not how some of my previous games have gone, that's for sure. That's for certain. You know, I think I... Uh, is there anything we want to make sure we get started on earlier, like, so that we can start building? You know, I'm going to be going for tanks so I can start with T-29s when we start producing them. I mean, okay. Is there anything in here that could help us do that quicker? One bonus, two bonus for armor. That's three bonuses right there. That'd be nice to grab. But for this first one, because if we go here, there's still a lot more than just three, so that'll be fine. Minister supports his ideology, radical socialist. Well, not much we can do. Damn, damn Mensheviks. <laughs> what happened to you? Okay, Neo-Slavic revival. With the Russian, bleh, Russian situation slowly stabilizing, some politicians, philosophers, and scholars are attempting to revive the 19th century concept of pan Pan-Slavism, a vision of a unified Slavic Union, Slavic? Slavic Federation, centered around Russia. These ideas are gaining quick support among the conservative military officers, including Anton Denikin and Peter Rangel. I mean, we can be, we can be Pan-Slavic and still be the Russian Republic. That's all I'm saying. We have a ways to go, okay? Hmm. Well, they're holding Vienna. So there we go. We have the Ochranka, and then we have further stabilization. So. And looks like we're building factories again, slowly, but surely. So that's good. Very good. Uh-oh. I'm just keeping an eager eye on the politics of the region. 
And the Ottomans are invading Iron Guard Romania, Azov class. Cool. Then we're going to get out of here, and we're going to go grab... Hmm. Yeah, you know what? Go and grab this so you can grab interwar artillery. Or the 170mm Obra 1940 artillery piece. Whatever. Clergy criticizes our government. Well, screw you, clergy. You're only setting us back. I mean, we're still in a disaster, apparently. Which is great. Um... Oh, I see. So now we can either reinstitute the Zemstvas or rely on the village communes. I'll have to check those out. Could be a vote, Psalm saying. And we don't need this, but we are going to go with expansionism so we can get that political power going. You know what I'm saying? Mm. We don't really have that many troops, so we're going to take half of you guys. See, this is Kornilov. Let's go find... Ooh, there's Denikin. What a beast. A wrangle. Wrangle. Ooh, you know what? On second thought... You're gonna... We're actually gonna put... See, these are all generals, right? Instead, we're gonna actually put... Um... Now, we're going to put Denikin. Oops, no. I want Denikin here. And I want Kornilov to be the one we're going to take to the front lines. And then we'll eventually we'll use Wrangle once the time comes. Um, so let's see. The Elash Order. Are they a part of any sort of faction? No. Uh, cause I'm just saying the Central Asian... Shakir Kazakhstan, Shakir Turkestan. For sure. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Yep, and so we'll do that and get Turkestan, and let's see, do they have any good commodities over here? Resources. Steel, that's good. So some more steel, but I think we have a fair amount, yeah, we have a fair amount of steel. Export focus, that's good. We don't really need free trade. I mean, first we need to get out of a disaster, and we need to actually have enough guns to supply the army before we can do anything, but, you know. Hey, see? There we, there we go. Very low. We're getting better. We're getting there. Um, why don't we grab excavation, actually? Or... Yeah, we'll grab excavation. Focusing on strong, on unity. Yes, now we're at low stability. See? Interesting. The Ottoman Empire took all this land? What? And now they're still fighting Greece and Serbia? That's wonky, dude. That's really wonky. That's super different. Man, I did I put I'm like really confused. Worker strike. Damn it, workers. Consumer goods factory. Uh I guess we'll fulfill their demands. At least that one goes away. Okay. We got expansionism, nice. Now we're gonna go for Central Asian direction. Russia announces her ambitions. Uh-oh. Well, many still view Russia as a failed state. Ayo. Fuck whoever said that. Anyway. 
<laughs> Torn apart by revolts, disorder, and effective rule and serving as a buffer for Middle Europa, recent events have proven something different. The government of the Russian nation has announced their territorial ambitions, laying claims on almost all the territory of the former Russian Empire, and it appears they are willing to reconquer the, reconquer the last land if necessary. Numerous nations in Eastern Europe have already recalled their embassies in Russia, and the world is waiting for Germany's response to this blatant attack on her sphere of influence. Yo, I got one thing. I want all these hoes to know that a real Russia just hit the flow. No more Versace get off on me. Something, something, something. They released Iron Guard. Oh, it's Iron Guard, but it's Paternal Autocrat. Oh no, Vornet's dead. That means nothing to me. I don't know why I cared that much, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, anyway. Who had all green on, like, Bulgaria as well? Oh, yeah, the Ottomans did. I see. Yeah, you're not doing so hot, Austria. You're getting your ass kicked by Poland. Yeah, Vienna is surely to fall. Dang. Oh, the Cretan state. I was like, what? What? Dang. Ottoman's going off, apparently. T25. Uh... Well, we're going to be going to war with Alash Orda here soon, so let's grab some of the more basic military technologies. Just saying. Militia. Divisia. Use our influence to revert his efforts. Central Asian Direction. Uh, secure Kazakhstan, indeed. A mass for the motherland. A harmless yet useful ceremony. I think so. Computing machine. Mm. Decryption. And... Oh! Whoa! Man, that takes... I wonder if... Yeah, these are really short. Holy crap. I hope you're ready, Cornwall. I mean, we're gonna crush them, so. I want all these hoes to know that a real Russia just hit the flow. Yeah. Ooh. Increase in stability. The Russian nation is strong. Russia strong. Actually, can you like go around that way? Have you go around that way? Thank you. Secure Turkestan. Yeah, we gotta wait a second for that. Um. Interesting. Yeah. Germany is busy. Demand concessions. <laughs> That's messed up. Um. What we're going to do right now instead is we are going to encourage free thought. We're in Kurdistan. Oops. By Alash Orda. We're 
Where's the capital now? Free military factories, hey. Also. Uh no. What's this fleet here? Oh yeah, no, this is the Baltic fleet. I was like, that's the wrong Black Sea, gosh. We don't even have a port there. <laughs> Duh. We don't have either we don't have either of these things, so psh, whatever. Um no, after this I want you don't have any rubber. Damn, dude. Come on now. Dutch East Indies. Oh, they released it. Wow. That's interesting. Hey, yo, what up, Juliana? Oh, we're so close. But this is actually kind of good. Eh, we don't need this. Maybe somebody else will get elected. Oh, yeah, we still need... We still don't have a president. What? Whatever. Justify war goal time. Well, we don't really have to do many of the justifications, so there's not much reason for that. Excavation Juan. Let's go ahead and grab that. It's taken longer than I thought it was going to. Well, I'd actually say longer than it should. Speaking of which... Okay, there we go. And perfect timing. Now we're going to go for secure Turkestan. Y'all better get ready. Um, and so we gain some factories. And hey, we're gaining... We're almost politically stable. Crappy supply regions, I bet. Yup. <laughs> uh, encryption? I guess so. Oh shit, we need to select a new national focus. Um, we don't really need that at the moment. We don't need air bases either. That would have been useful. That's also useful. Mm. I don't know what to grab. Division recovery rate? That's pretty good. Mongolia beating them back? Jeez. Well, the clicks kind of fighting a two-front war. Ooh, the National Republic of Lithuania. Great faction. <laughs> Guarantee independence. It's too late. <laughs> okay. What shall we do?
Mm. You know what? We have the increase speed on Grand Mo Mobile Warfare. Uh, i take this back. You know what? We will have one, but I want... I'm stupid. You know what? Whatever. We just need more guns at the moment. I mean, we're Russia, okay. We have the population. Oops. Oh, German getting kind of ballsy there. What is the German Union? That's wonky. Thank you, Turkestan. Cool. We have done well. Very well. And now we can go for the caucus direction. Um... But yeah, so let's see. I wanna let's look at what these are. So rely on the village communes. In the spirit of democracy, we should grant strong local go local governance to the communes of our nation. Russia is a massive nation, and to believe that it could all be governed from a single place is crazy. So we get construction speed, some unity, and some political power. Fifty political power that is. The Zemstvo is a form of local governance and representation first introduced by Alexander II in 1864. Strongly weighs favored aristocrats, but it still assures representation on lower classes. It will, without a doubt, assure stabi stability in our torn nation. We can't do that because, yeah. So let's see, and that just gives us some political power. Then we get construction speed, so those kind of cross out some infrastructure and also 5% unity, so we fund a bunch of places, okay. National bank, so two civilian and two military. To, so let's see four. Then we get a research slot and bonus, and we get some more factories and civilian to military factory conversion, and we remove for this st yeah, stabilization. Okay, well, that's all right, I guess. Two and one enrichment of the Russians. The national investment bank, sick card. Liberalize the economy by freeing up the economy from old power structures, new emerging companies, chance the old ones. The quest to be competitive, need to be competitive in order to grow and expand. War reparation, okay, well, that's alright. Local supply points, so. Okay. Russia's size is both her greatest strength and her greatest weakness. As hard as it is for hostile armies to remain supply, it is so too for our armies by establishing local supply points in key areas we can make sure our troops stay. In good supplies at all times, industrialization. By industrializing the far reaches of our countryside, we do not only make sure our whole nation stays alive, but also that targeting our industries becomes much more difficult for our enemies. Encourage local search of resources. Add eight oil and two factories. Um, agricultural innovations. Well, I shouldn't have. Well, I guess that's cool. And a research slot. Um, well, I'm going to go ahead and say that I'm going for relying on the village communes. Yes, sir. But, but, I'm going to leave it up to a vote. I personally would rely on the village communes because I just think oil, aluminum, that's nice. Um, I mean, it, I mean, it's actually fairly balanced. I think it could go really either way. But, so basically, let's just go through this again because this is going to be a vote. So we are either going to reinstitute the Zemtsvas, I don't know how to say that, or we're going to rely on the village communes. Reinstating the Zemstvas. Um, the Zemstvo is a form of lo local governance representation first introduced by Alexander II in 1864. It strongly weighs favor to aristocrats, but still assures representation in the lower classes. It will, without a doubt, assure stability in our torn nation. I know I already read these, but I figured I'd read them again now that I've gone to the idea that we're actually going to vote on them. In the spirit of democracy, <clears throat> democracy, we should grant strong local governments to the communes of our nation. Russia is a massive nation, and to believe that it could all be governed from a single place is crazy. And we've all seen what these have, so this would give us, you know, a lot of nice civilian factories to start out with. And this wouldn't give us as many, but, you know, it's both good, and the consumer goods factory at the end is pretty nice, and it kind of makes up for a lot of stuff over here. But I'm going to go ahead and leave that up to you guys. Um, I will have the straw poll in the description, as I always do. And make sure you vote there. You can, I mean, you can continue to put comments, and I like seeing a lot of comments. That's awesome. But I'm just saying, you can put a comment and be like, yeah, 
uh, green suit to Zamsvas, number one, or rely on the village communes, whatever. But if you don't vote in the straw poll, I'm not gonna know. So there's that. Just figure I'd reiterate, just so you guys know. Anyway, guys, I like to thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, please leave a like, subscribe, share, comment, and make sure you go to the polls. You know, Pokemon, go to the polls, please. Anyway.